Do it fast. Ain't no time for fucking around. Ain't no time for that. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm making a game. It's called God Killer. It is a 3D top-down puzzle solving adventure. And today, I'm going to do uh, the penultimate changes to my hand animation tool, which go into my game. And I do not have a lot of time to work on it. Um, I'm got a dinner I got to be at in an hour and a half. Promised people I would be there. But I have a commitment to make progress on this <coughs> every day. Progress every day. This is the 121st day in a row in which I've made some form of progress on this game. Not just effort, progress every single day. Okay. So, uh, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? So there's a small set of remaining changes to make to this hand animation tool. Yesterday, to do my quick demo, um, I added spacing. This is kind of weird. It's just easier to show. Uh, so I added these text boxes that are aligned with the, the yellow lines. The yellow lines are, are keyframes in uh, animation of the hands. I click on the, these guys I can change them to one of the specialized gestures reusable gestures that can go into that slot if it's just a period in the keyframe it'll be a little bump for the hand the, the hand will just move up a little tiny bit barely perceptible um, and I'll show you what it looks like oops lost my setting there all right here we go M you are special I say that to all my creatures but so that's the demo portion of this live coding session now I make it to coding this is three minutes in instead of ten minutes in I'm gonna get working because I've got that dinner I've got to be at I think I can leave at 630 and get there like a just a tiny bit late, like 6.45. I don't think that'll bum anybody out. All right, so on my list of remaining changes, it's a very short list. Um, I want to move some of the tweakable properties that I have um, in here to be instead constants that are in the source code. Usually the opposite way you go. Usually you make things more tweakable, but what I found is that uh, there's some settings that work well, and I don't need to change them all the time. And having them be tweakable is kind of a liability because um, they affect the number of gesture insertion points that are present for the animation. And if I change the settings, then any data I put in here is invalidated. So it's actually better for them to be less configurable. So that's what I'm going to do. <coughs> that's one of the things. Assuming that goes well, I'll move on to the next thing. Uh, so wave controller should have a bunch of public fields. I'm going to change them. Okay. Let's call this... <coughs> const private <coughs> god damn this logarithmic cold at this point it's just a shallow itch in my throat it's just a little tickle down there that's all it is but cough drop okay const and I need to change this to the actual value that's in the inspector not point 0.3, but I'll use 2 instead of 2.02. Okay. Cooldown time. What did I say? 0.32. Okay. That means there has to be a minimum amount of space between the gestures. Short ramp time. It's like it affects how smoothly you transition from one keyframe to another. Uh, point 0.2. 
large gesture threshold. Stays at point one. This line here, this line here um, actually cuts out some of these peaks so that they're ignored. Unless, I mean, they, they don't make a bump animation unless I override them and say I'm going to have a non bump animation there. So this line here. It's affected by the, this setting of 0.1. Okay, bump amount 0 0.005. This setting I'm not actually using the loudness adjust. Duration 0 0.01. Okay. That should be a, it's worth double checking because it'll be a little bit hard to get this exact uh, set of magical tweaks tested again. So I'm moving this off to another screen so I can see a copy of it while well, at the same time I do that. Okay, so it's gestures per second, two cooldown time 0.32 short ramp time 0.2 large gesture thresh 0.1 bump amount 0 0.005 bump time 0.01 cool that's that so I come back and make these all private private const to see if that compiles. <coughs> it does. So my next thing is I'll just rename these so that they follow my, my formatting style above. This is an annoying thing where, <coughs> I don't know, I go back and forth between these static read-onlys and cons. Not worth explaining. kind of doesn't work. Uh, all right. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. Another way to do it.
Okay, let's see, let's see how this does. Okay, so that was uh, kind of a under the hood change. It should produce no different behavior other than it's just going to remove a whole bunch of these settings here. It will only suck it, I believe. Yep, no tweaking. Um, I also have a little bug. where it, it doesn't quite generate the animation with the bumps correctly until after I've made a change to a setting. So I might as well fix that now too, because I won't, yeah, I'll, I'll fix that, yeah. So, so on validate, I'm just doing something. happening inside of here that's not ready for yet, maybe. Let me step through it. good. from the gesture insertions, but I haven't yet inserted anything. Is that true? Wait, no. No, no, that should be fine. It's a 22. So I think this should return codes. Do I get codes? Yeah, I got codes. That's fine. Let's see, are the needed gestures loaded? This might be where it trips up. Let me see if anything's loaded yet. <coughs> hmm. so there's one, four. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Okay, this is this is the problem. So where what loads them? I forget. This is, oh, I know what this is. It's an order, it's an order of initialization problem. So there's another game object that's responsible for loading in all the gestures. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. So the, the hand animation can't be generated. So I should untangle this. It's also a reminder to me to, to not depend on multiple objects to initialize things that each other depends upon. At least not through like the <coughs> like game object methods or their life cycle. It's better to just control it directly. Just have one main start or awake life cycle event that calls off to other things to initialize. Um, 
But I'm not going to re refactor too much here. This is a, a very short-lived tool. Or I should say there's very little I need to do on it. So it's not worth doing a lot of cleanup. Let me think about my options. So I'll hit play. And that will not set things up correctly. <coughs> options. <coughs> Generate animation each time play is pressed. Because that's the problem. If I go here, I have play. M, you are special. So it's it's not picking up the bump animations because there's no animation that's been loaded yet. So even now I might not have any thing that generates that. M, no. you are special. That part will I say that to all my creatures, but truly, you... Okay. So as soon as I edited something in one of the text boxes, um, I forget exactly how it's hooked up, but it caused the animation to be generated. Well, I could just have the animation be generated right when you hit play. That would hurt nothing at all uh, that I can think of. Um, although I'm, as soon as I say that I'm having doubts anyways that's my number one solution it's definitely easy number two yeah, this is like the correct but hard one or not hard but it's time consuming probably not worth the effort create main object responsible for loading everything I'm almost certainly not going to do that one. Um, move loading code in the wave controller. Some different options here. Uh, Time consuming. Mm, this one is just looking so easy. I'm just trying to think how it could bite me in the ass. So maybe if I want to do something else with the hand animation before I hit play. But no, nah, you know what? I don't see any case where I have to do that. And I'm so near the completion of, of being done with this tool. Um, I, I just don't want to think, work that hard for the future. Because the future looks quite limited. Uh, so I'll say, if it's initialized, generate friggin' animation. Let me, let me try that. Should work. Not doing bad on my time. Assuming that this works, I will move on to a new feature. I might have hit play too quick. Okay. M, you are special. Okay, that fixed that bug. <coughs> Got all my stuff in uh, constants instead of tweakable settings that would have fucked up my animation. Moving on to the next feature. So, um, I have like a, another tool in here which can be used to author gestures. So, I'll show you a few gestures. Here's the bird gesture. There's, this one isn't very useful, it's just kind of interesting to look at. Okay, and then uh, I can do clasped, clasped together. And they all have a code associated with them, a one letter code that can be assigned to one of these insertion points in the, in the overall hand animation. These gestures are just the little parts that make up one complete animation that's associated with uh, some 
speech audio, some dialogue. So, I have like a Google Doc, a cheat sheet. <coughs> I have to keep updating that shows what those letters are. And what I'm thinking is instead I'll just have on the screen uh, some text that shows all the mapping so that while I'm putting them down here, I can just look on the screen and see what, what there is. Uh, that should not be hard. That I think I can do in 40 minutes and still be right on schedule to go hang out with my buddies for dinner. Um, and maybe even get one more thing besides that done. So let me think, let me think. This is, uh, this is GUI code. Hmm, <laughs> it's in wave controller, it is. Okay, it's gonna be Boom. draw cheat sheet. And let me pass in No, nah, I don't need to pass it anymore. screen again. In theory, I think I can just do a single column, or maybe maybe two columns, one, one for code, one for name. I think sorting them by name would be a good way to go, because the codes will end up getting more and more weird and not related to the, the name as I run out of letters to assign. Um, I think just two columns, I'll go name on the left column, code on the right column. Go straight down. I might end up with like 30 or so of these, but I can use a smaller font, and that that's plenty of room to display all of that information. And while it's playing, I'll hide it. So it only be while I'm not playing, I'm stopped, and I'm authoring the uh, gestures that are appearing at these insertion points that we'll see the cheat sheet. Cheat sheet itself, I want to get from this other class I have that's in charge of all those code mappings. So I'll just create a couple methods. Get, get a list of all the gestures. That's what I want. Because each one of those gestures is already a container for both the name and the code. So let's call it a uh, gesture. Um, and then um, they will be sorted. So
textures, order, ah, friggin' need links. Uh, use. Link, that's what it's called. Link. Okay. Order by gesture. And it's uh, gesture. Gesture. <coughs> Name? Is that how it works? Apparently not. Um, I did it someplace else. I'm just gonna go look for that. Order by. There it is. Oh, it's it's like a enumerable thing. Okay, so if I do, well, here. That's working code. Okay, so that worked. I want to do it with the other thing. So I think it'll work with this too. And I should be able to convert that to an array. And I can just go to array. Okay, so assuming that works, come back to Wave Controller. say gesture gestures equals that thing I just wrote. I'm gonna rename this to get all. up here um, no I kind of need to create a new rect for each one of them but I can set my, my values up here so we'll say the ones that don't change I mean um, name equals 20th or no that sounds good stupid random spinny okay
Okay. And then the code. This is where I, I just strongly dislike C sharps fucking nonsense worthless const because uh, if I just do an expression that's made up entirely out of const values in a C or C++ compiler it's fine not C sharp so it is X. I'm going to be a little consistent here. Let's do CX cheap margin. <coughs> Let's do it this way. X cheap. And CX code equals x g name plus let's give it g name that should do it okay and A new type of thing I haven't used yet, which should just be GUI text. I'm just gonna, even without looking at the documentation, just assume it's called something like that. Text, not text field though, not text area. Yep, well, I guess it's not as easy as I thought. Alright, where is, where is the thing I want? just to draw some text on the screen. Um, okay, I do have to look it up in the docs. Unity, GUI, text, label. Okay, maybe it's just called label. That was it. It was my third guess. Okay, so we say new wrapped Just change this more generally to a row, and I can use it for both. Okay, that's the rect, and then the text. I don't need to do an if. Uh, the text is going to be g name. Okay, so that does one label, the other one. Should just do CX on this. Okay, and we gotta increment the, the row position. Uh, and that can just be uh, there's a tiny chance of this working the very first time. I'll give it 
12% chance of working the very first time. Did not work. Did not work. Um, it's okay. I didn't give it a very good chance. I expected it would not work. Let's debug. So the first question, did any gestures come back? None. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, let me see if any have loaded yet. I guess none have loaded yet. I might be. I might be calling this too early. Um, but a little bit later, they should load though. So when the other object finishes loading, they should also load. Let me see if now they've loaded. Not yet. What about now? This is really teaching me a lesson just to always have that main initialization. Don't have like some stupid everybody chaotically do their own initialization on their own. Not if you're going to have objects depend on each, on each other. Um, I still don't want to refactor that right now. I'm just so close to being done with this. It would be a horrendous waste. So what's going on? I, I think this might be like a an issue where it's tough for me to debug because it keeps on hitting the same breakpoint before the other thing is loaded. So let me hit play and let it just now at this point if I let it play it definitely should have loaded in all the gestures. I could be wrong. Oh, you know what? It might need like a... Huh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Play. I was expecting certain behavior in the editor that wasn't meant to work. Okay. So I actually did get it right the first time. I just didn't test it correctly. So no, I made no changes to the code to get this to work. Um, the code I wrote was 100% perfect the first time. Uh, nobody's impressed except for me. But here's a list. Formatted pretty good. I am thinking about like the difficulty in sort of following the line all the way out to the end. And what I can do is just decrease the size of, of this column width a little bit. It also means I'll have to be careful not to make like extra long text. But then I can I can have this other column closer. Um, and that'll be that will be easier to line up the two. Um, the other way I could do it is maybe change like the the font coloring. But I, I think I'll just do it, it just something really easy here by just um, reducing the size. 150. So if I cut it by 25% I'll be over there. Yeah, that'll probably do it. 
if I'm confused about one, I can get a rebuild and it will update while it's playing. Um, M. That seemed to almost work. Okay, that worked. This looks good. I mean, if I hit play, I want to see if, if it stays. If it stays after I hit play, then that features in the dump pod. It did. It did. M. U. R. Perfect. When I said play, I meant the Unity play as opposed to the audio play. For the audio play, if I hit play, I want it to disappear. M. U. R. So that I can kind of concentrate on the, the hand animation. Um, cool. All right, that was, that was uh, pretty major. And I've still got time on the clock. I'm looking through <coughs> my list of to-dos. Uh, I'm going to erase code cheat sheet. I have one that I'm going to save for later, which is saving to a hands file. <coughs> Uh, and then I've got it would be nice to get this done I think I could almost barely do it so I want two buttons one called prev prev clip and next clip and I want them to navigate between audio files that are in my persistent storage so I can use it to kind of choose which wave file I'm going to work on um, and that would be good for the workflow of doing a lot of hand animations all at one time I definitely don't want to load the audio files by by uh, making inspector edits, which is what I can do now. <clears throat> All right, 5.45. I could do this in a half hour. I could do it. I could do it, just barely, just barely, and with a little bit of luck. Oh shit, I feel nervous. I'm caught between two potentially bad situations if I, if I commit to this. Um, don't want to go up against my Mr. Meeseeks or be late to the dinner I promised to be at. The Mr. Meeseeks problem is that if I take on a task, I have to get it solved. Or I get really upset. Okay. You know what? I'm going to divide the task. I'm going to make a different task. The, the task I'm going to give myself is just to put up the UI, the buttons for this, but not hook them into the persistent audio. So it is a clearly defined task. I will be able to complete it. And I'm more likely to get done around 6, which leaves me less stressed out to go to my dinner. So, this shouldn't be too hard. OP3 Kills! What kind of game? It is a 3D top-down puzzle-solving adventure. Maybe a little bit like Portal in its attitude uh, and the things it makes you go about doing learning about a 3D space and uh, what things you can do in it. Yeah. Put this handle uh, clip navigation. And like right now I'm working on one tool that's used to generate hand animations for it. But um, I'm fighting to finish it. I think two more sessions, this session and the, the next one should finish it and I'll return to the game proper. I'll demo the game for people too. It's it's. I think it's turning out well. Uh, let's see. So 
let's call this let's make this part of the control panel Two buttons. Yeah, you making a game to learn it, or like, how how are you going about learning it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 2D is a great way to go. Um, simplifies things a little bit, but there's still still plenty to get. I do love like the amount of information that's on YouTube. It's it's really. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. So down here I said. Let's see. Come on. Okay. Refactor this a little bit. I suppose so. You said full sale online? I don't know what that is. What am I missing? Oh. 
name needs to be the same. Alright. So is that there? Is that there? So I've been working on it for about half a year. And uh, I'd say I'm about 20% done on it. All the game elements are coded. Um, it's missing many levels. It's missing a lot of content. It's missing like uh, you know, like some of the screens that you sort of take for granted. That actually, take a little bit longer than you think. Like, like the title screen, the, the load game screen, stuff like that. Uh, so let me see. Will this work on the first try? Pretty close pretty close to working on the first try. I, I gotta increase the button size and then it will be right on. Let's see, it's, what did I say? ADF. I'm still doing pretty good uh, for my time here. I have got a good stopping point here. I'm supposed to join some buddies for dinner at 6.30. And I did promise I would be there. So as much as I would love to keep coding, love to, love to keep coding right now. It's hard to tear away right now. Um, I'm going to go off to this dinner I promised to be at. OP3 kills, thank you for joining me. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck learning stuff. If you ever want to drop in chat some more maybe ask questions about what you're doing I, I'm all cool with that if that's what you want to do um, and uh, yeah have a good day stop in the stream stop in the stream see you man